Okay. Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love every Saturday. Now, we're reading from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, you know, I got to put in Pat's Two Cents right there. A lot of people quote, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. That's not the completion of the statement. The completion of the statement is on one condition, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's a conditional statement. So we have to remember, it's not just being in Christ, but it's being in Christ forsaking the flesh, forsaking the deeds of the flesh, the words of the flesh, the behavior of the flesh, the attitudes of the flesh, the longings of the flesh, the flesh. Okay, verse two. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And that's what it does. A lot of times you walk with the Lord and you've been spending all your unsaved life looking for fulfillment, looking for love, maybe in all the wrong places, looking for gratification, satisfaction. You're looking for things that only God can give you. You can only find in Christ Jesus. I hear people nowadays saying they can hardly wait to get on the other side so they can get the peace of God. The peace of God is right here. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. So we have to remember everything we need is in God. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So what that means is since he condemned sin in the flesh, we should not coddle sin in the flesh. We should not pamper sin in our flesh. You hear me? See, when the Bible says faith without works is dead, that's what it means. Faith without works is dead. You got to have faith and you got to have works. If you're going to be an electrician, you got to know how to do it and you got to use the right tools or else somebody's going to get hurt, shocked, damaged in the hospital, whatever. You got to know what to do with what you got. And you can't mishandle what God has given you. You can't just haphazardly Pick it up when you want, throw it down when you don't want, do it your way when you want, you know, like Wendy, have it your way. Yeah, you can't do it like that. But for those who are walking after the spirit, guess what? You got some real blessings coming because God rewards righteousness. God rewards holiness. God rewards those who want to serve him from a pure heart of love. God rewards all that. So know that for those of you who are living in the spirit, oh, you got some serious, some serious goodies coming down the pipe. God is taking notes. He's looking and booking. He does not forget the blessings that you lay on other people's lives. He does not forget the love that you shed on God and on God's people. He does not forget that. When you bless the least of these, you're blessing him. That's right. When you mistreat the least of these, you're mistreating him. All right, let's keep going. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. This is verse five. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and death peace. Now, we're going to go down a little further. Now, we're going to go to verse 24, because some of you think that this is a magic wand, but it's not. What God said is, for we are saved by hope, 
but hope that is seen is not hope. If I'm handing Lynn a box of candy and she's been praying for that exact kind of candy for the longest, been longing for it, but she can't seem to find it. And I tell her, tomorrow, I got a surprise for you. And I come up and I show her the box of candy and she sees it's the very thing she's been wanting. She doesn't have to believe for it anymore. It's there. It's already there. You don't have to hope for what you already have. You don't have to believe for what you already see. But what the Bible is trying to teach us is that when we walk with Christ and we're walking in the spirit rather than the flesh, we have to be patient. Verse 5, but if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And some of you need to wait for your blessing. Some of you need to wait for your change. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. All right. Now, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he searcheth the heart. He that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind and spirit, because he hath, he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, the one thing we have to know, the whole deck is stacked in our favor. No matter what we put our hands to, God is going to bless it. One way or another, he's going to bless it because we are endeavoring. We're not doing a perfect job, but we are endeavoring for perfection. We're endeavoring to do things his way. And when we endeavor to do things his way, he takes note. He, he, he acknowledges our effort and he helps us. You ever try to start a car? And you're trying to push it uphill. That's the way our lives are. So it feels like we're going uphill. It's an uphill climb, y'all. Well, there are times when we're trying to push that car uphill and we can't seem to get it to move. And then all of a sudden, it feels like it's not taking as much effort. And then all of a sudden, the momentum is going and we look back and there are two or three people helping us push. It's like, oh, thank you. Right. That's what God does in our lives. He's right there pushing. He's got his angels pushing with you. His Holy Spirit is pushing, helping the momentum go because he knows that you will get tired along the way and he doesn't want you to faint. You hear me? He is working on our behalf. He's not working against us. So remember that, that God, is working for us, that whatever he's allowing in our lives is for us. And while we're trying to strive for perfection, we must also remember not to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this world. Because if you're not careful, you will get involved with people who have the nini ninis. They always want to tie you in to their issues, their problems, issues they got with this one, that one, and the other one. And they want to get you all entangled with their mess. And you don't have time. You've got things to do for God. You can't concentrate on everything that's going on around you, you've got to keep your eye on the prize. You've got to focus on that finish line because God has a destiny lined out for you. And they're not part of that destiny, maybe. But whatever it is, you cannot get sidetracked by their destiny. You've got to stay on your, you've got to stay in your lane, basically. So be careful not to get entangled with other people's gripes, with other people's issues, with other people's gossip, with other people's backbiting. Be careful not to get caught up in that, but stay in your lane, stay focused, stay prayerful, and don't get distracted. One thing I noticed, I remember years ago, uh, the Lord's bringing this to my memory right now. Years ago, 
when the doctor was about to tell my father he was going to revoke his license. My father had a perfect driver's record. He also was an excellent driver. But when he had brain damage from a fall from the, from the roof, we noticed after he recovered, he was still trying to drive. And one thing I saw one day when I was following him, I was in my car, he was in his, he was going to take his car to get fixed because it was beyond his ability and beyond his equipment. He could almost fix anything. Well, he was taking the car to get it fixed. He had me follow him so I could bring him home. But on the way, I'm laying on my horn, blowing and blowing and blowing, because my father, I saw his head turn to the left. He had a hat on, so I could really see what he was doing. He turned to the left, and he got sidetracked, and he started staring at something that caught his attention. And while he was staring to his left, his car was veering over to the left, getting ready to get caught up under a big rig that was in the next lane. And I'm laying on my horn and it got his attention enough to straighten back out. And that's when we knew it was time to take his license away because the normal pop would never have allowed that to happen. Some of you are allowing things to distract you. And when they, if you look to the left, if you look to the right, you're going to steer to the left. You're going to steer to the right. You've got to be very careful not to get caught up in what's happening that doesn't involve you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Don't get caught up in other people's confusion. Don't get caught up in other people's battles and fights. Remember, God will let you know when it's time for you to do spiritual warfare. But if you're in the middle of doing something for God, you stay on task. That's what you do. And you will find your life has fewer and fewer bumps, dips, curves, detours, delays. You will see that because God's helping you every step of the way. The more you obey, the more help you get, believe it or not. The more you strive to obey, the more help you get. So whatever you do, stay with God, stay focused, and remember, patiently expect his blessing. Patiently. You don't have to worry about being condemned when you blow it because you're trying. We're all going to blow it. We'll trip over our own feet. But be found trying. That's the point. And remember, we are in the dispensation of grace. So you don't have to get an A+. Plus, but pass the test. Don't fail the test. Pass it. Amen? Stay with God. He's definitely staying with you. Remember that part. But he wants to see effort on your part. No matter what he blesses you with, there are conditions and he wants to see you participate, not spectate. All right. God bless you. Be encouraged. 